This is a 1973 Hutton 51 Samarium. Mike Mullenberg here with Pacific Cruising Yachts up in Anacortes, Washington. This is kind of a close-up view of the condition. Uh, the previous two surveys showed uh, solid hull. Uh, all the readings, the auto sound readings, were, uh, showed no degradation. So this is the stern of the boat. And I know that there were particular questions about the rudder system. Uh, this one is set up from what Vince just explained to me with a Sayers autopilot system that fits into here and fits into another slot down here. And I believe that's up on deck. Uh, but you've got single point attachment point there. Long rod attachment point there. And then carries on up to a long rod attachment point right there. And then the tiller obviously turns in toward the deck. Top sides paints really in pretty good shape. A few spots need some touch up. Uh, the bottom just needs a good sand and a paint. Cutlass bearing. The cutlass bearing is got a little bit of wobble in it. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, that's about half worn. It's a small amount, but yeah, you can see it just needs needs some of this stuff knocked off. Zinks have been working. It's very front. Yeah, a lot of zinc. Perfect. Uh, this is the dink. Again, she's got a few scarfs on the side, but that's why people buy steel boats. Standing rigging we have not really looked at closely. Uh, Burling Systems looks like it's got a Harkin and a Harkin, looks like. Yeah, the UV covers obviously have been doing their job, so they need to be replenished. But this side of the hull is in great shape. The, uh, many stay lock fittings is a nice feature. Have a need to change, uh, cables. Yeah, this has got stay locks all the way around which I think you can just, yeah, right there, and there. So the water line's been raised, it appears to be about seven, eight inches. Five to six. I yeah, five to six. So that just means you can load lots of gear. So their intention, whoever did the paint line, was to load this thing full. And hard to tell now, but I don't believe that she, she ever sank down to the top of the line. I'm, I'm looking like it's most of the wares. That's where your water lapping spots are right there. Yeah. 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 So basically, <laughs> yeah, they basically have got a single panel here, construction. All the way forward, bent around, and another panel. Yeah, she sweeps up aft. Good water run off the hull. As Vince was just saying, deep forefoot, so she's going to be a really comfortable drive into weather. The shine is really fair, which means that she's fabricated well. Yeah, good fabrication. There's no really dips and doodles. A few little squiggles here, but boy, that's pretty minor. But you got a thick bottom plate all the way from the stem, all the way aft. Yeah, she got a bit of a foil shape to the uh, to the keel.
So if you notice the rigging, Vince was just pointing out that the intermediates uh, coming up to, uh, there was my finger, this set of spreaders, and then up to the base of the third spreader, they're completely separated from the uppers that go all the way to the cap shrouds that go all the way to the top of the mast. And they suspect that uh, the reason why is if you lost the top part of the mast, you'd still have an uninterrupted support for the remaining section here to run with the cutter rig. So pretty smart layout, pretty smart design. Steering vane. We've got a lash to a piece of wood just to stow it. We've got a preventer vang here, <clears throat> snatched to both sides. The, yeah. Right there. Remove and switch to the other side. These ports were the ones that were bleeding. Those need attention. Get a little bit going there. Oh, you got your, you got your LP dank. Okay, nice. Stainless box. Nice setup. It's a big one too. This top mean, of that Samson post has a really interesting little chain holder. Top of the Samson post? I saw that. Yeah. So basically, you drop, your chain. <laughs> you drop your chain right in to that little keyhole right there and just have that hold it. It's smart. A little bit around the uh, porch there, a little bit of bleeding there. And most of the degradation is around these opening ports. Nice white side decks. Nice push of it. Those bollards. Okay, let's go inside. This is Mike Mullenberg and Vince Townrow with Pacific Cruising Yachts in Anacortes, Washington. We're doing a uh, quick walkthrough on the uh, 1973 Hutton 51 cutter, steel cutter, Samarium. Uh, this boat was uh, designed and built by Ted and Ned, or no, John and Ned Hutton down at uh, Sanford Board Yard in San Francisco back in 73. Same people uh, had just previously built Bernard Motissier's uh, final boat, Tomata. And this boat actually, uh, Samarium takes a lot of her design scantlings from, uh, from Joshua. And Tomata combined a lot of the parts and pieces. This is 51 feet LOA. Uh, so uh, a lot of similarities to what Bernard ended up as his last boat. And it was built pre-Dodger days. Right. The Dodger was an add-on since the little bubble. If you slide that while you're up there, Vince, it's just slide that hatch. And then we can kind of demonstrate how the uh, how the, the little submarine bubble. So if there was not a Dodger on here, Vince could be basically sitting at the helm, kind of with his head poked out, reaching through the hatch, steering the boat. Waves crashing over the top of the boat. This is all natural light. We don't have power on the boat yet. But a lot of opening ports. That radio is pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Big quarter berth. Main electrical panels. Where I'm standing right now is about 6'2". Vince, how tall are you? About six. Six, would you mind just standing straight up? All right, so it's about six two-ish, six three tops, probably. So about six two to six three, right through the main salon. And then as you spin around, get everybody sick here, uh, that drops down to a almost six four, six five. Got nice little nooks up above here. A lot of light, a lot of natural light for a 
sure about. <coughs> Thick insulation on the ice box, refrigeration system. Good drawer storage. Gimbaled two burner with oven. Nook storage back behind, deep lockers behind. Cutting board access below for storage. Simple, very functional, beefy handrails. Come to the other side, you've got a good sized table, library. And then you move aft, you've got one another deep quarter, berth. deep quarter berth. I think it's huge. And access to the engine is underneath the steps. We'll fiddle with that and then do a quick shot of that in a minute. So walking forward, we got on the starboard side immediately aft of the main salon is the head. Again, simple fold down seat for shower. Good ventilation up the top. Storage back behind, simple. Nice piano hinge door. The woodwork in here is really quite nice, quite well done. So immediately to port is the first cabin. We call it a semi-private. It's got a curtain pull, big Pullman berth. They're huge. Storage above on both sides. Opening hatch above. Cabin heater. It's my understanding this is inoperable, but I think it's serviceable if a person knows how to mess with them. Uh, keel step mast. And then a compression post forward of that to support the loads of the deck. So then we've got This berth. And all along the port side here is storage and you got deep storage below the V berth, all ventilated. Offset off the hull, what condensation slide to the bilge. Smart design. Open four peak with a piece of canvas that rolls down, and this pipe basically takes the chain down to the uh, chain locker, which is below, keeping the weight low. Vertical space in here is going to be about, hmm, I couldn't quite sit cross legged, but it's a sleeping berth, not a poker room. Huge hang locker. And we're down to about 510 headroom up here, 511. Storage. And then another storage locker low. And then back behind vents, there's a locker there. Yeah, the one right behind your left leg. There you go. Yeah, you have to go up the step. But that basically swings open. And that hinges out. And it's got bins set up for canned goods. Looks like there's still some groceries left. But again, keeping the weight low, using storage. And then if you look at under if you look at under under some of these bunks, these bunks have all got storage below. These are heavy cushions, so we're not gonna lift them, but uh, a lot of storage below. Locker storage. Kind of interesting how they've got basically breathing holes on everything for ventilation. Which is always good to see when a builder does that. Mm -hmm. 
bilge boards. I don't know if there's one removable or not where you're at, Vince. Yeah. Dry as a bone. Yep. There we go. Access to the top of some tanks. So you got basically a shower box there. This guy here. And it looks like you've got uh, tankage with removable cleaning access on the top. Can't quite see the rest. A little dusty down there, but it's dry. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the main fuel tank is back behind Vince in the main salon. if you have young man's knees to get around this boat. Yeah, go for the easy one. Yeah, that's a clean up, pull clean up port tank. there. Tank. Tanks, by the looks of it. Yeah, that's water. Water bottles, multiple tanks. Yeah, that's fuel, it looks like. So all the tankies looks like it's in the belly of the boat, which is good. You got a red dot here, it looks like. Shot here. Nice raw water intake. I presume that's a what is that, a Perkins or a Lehman? It's Perkins. She hasn't been running a couple of years, so she's gonna need some love, but I think overall, I think when she surveyed Dave, the current owner, did uh, did a fair amount of maintenance on it. So it's two parts. So this part comes off here, and then the bottom part actually comes off too, so you can get out the entire engine. Okay, so this is a through hole underneath the uh, the main sink. So explain again, Vince, what you're seeing here. The um, the bronze through hole is uh, insulated from the steel in the way they mounted it. There's a a, a, a steel. Um, Feral. Feral, I guess, uh, welded to the hull. Then there's insulating, and then the bronze is, is uh, bolted down to that so that the uh, corrosion issues pretty much go away, which is why that that whole area is looking very clean. The, the hull steel, I mean. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And those are old school. Serviceable. Uh, uh, through grease, hulls. Grease, grease certs on the through hull. You can disassemble them. Clean them up, Clean put them, them up, right back right in. Right back together. Yep. So that's impressively done. Hopefully, that gives you a little bit better perspective of what this magnificent steel cutter could really provide. It's uh, it's in much better shape than uh, first blush. And once you've spent some time on the boat and crawled through and looked, you'll see a, a lot of well done features on the boat. This boat was designed to basically cross oceans and Northwest Passage and uh, around the capes. Anyway, Mike Mullenberg, Vince Townrow, Pacific Cruising Yachts, signing off.